Jelena about after the webinar we're gonna do that so you could always put your questions there feel free to ask as many as questions you have so that we can answer that because what study metros goal is to let you talk to the university representative directly so that you get the crystal clear information and it helps you to make a decision about that whether you have this as a as a nice program or a nice option for you to opt so we are still accepting the application for the main thing and i'm going to have jelena talk about you talk to talk about uh, northeastern's graduate certificate program in detail with you so jelena you can start and we all are listening to you thank you so much uh, thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Yelena Page, and I work for Northeastern University's the Moore McKim School of Business. Um, I work as a recruitment manager for graduate certificate programs. Um, so let me just give you a quick overview of what graduate certificate programs are. Uh, the, these are a master's level programs, so uh, MBA level certificate programs uh, that international students are allowed to take over the course of two semesters. We have um, we have many certificate programs. We have a general certificate in business administration program, and then we have specialty certificate programs such as a certificate in accounting, corporate renewal, leadership in human capital, which is just a fancy way of saying a certificate in human resources. Uh, we have a certificate in innovation management, international business, marketing. Um, there is a certificate that's a pathway into our Master's of Science in Technological Entrepreneurship program. Uh, we also offer one certificate uh, as a type of a study abroad one semester for one semester in the United States where students come here, take four classes over the course of one semester, and they return to uh, either their current graduate institution in their home country and they transfer these credits with them. Or they can uh, come here, study for one semester and then transfer the credits earned in the certificate program into a different master's degree here at Northeastern University or anywhere else in the US. Uh, we offer a certificate in supply chain management um, and then there is just a certificate in technological entrepreneurship that's not a pathway into MSTE program but rather allows you to choose uh, some of our technological entrepreneurship classes that you may be interested in. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, these certificates are available to international students uh, over the course of four months, one semester, or eight months, two semesters. Uh, if you are taking a eight-month certificate, you will be taking five MBA-level courses. We don't require GMAT or TOEFL for the certificate uh, program. However, if you are planning on attending a, an MBA degree down the line after the certificate or a master's degree, you should plan on taking the GMAT or GRE. Um, as I mentioned earlier, all these credits may transfer to many masters or our MBA program. We admit three times a year. We admit in January, we admit in May, and we admit in September. Students are eligible for OPT if they complete an eight-month certificate program. So if you spend two semesters studying in the certificate program, and so successfully complete that certificate, you will be eligible for OPT. So you will be allowed to stay and work in the United States for about 12 months. The four month certificate uh, does not allow for OPT. So what are some of your options when you, uh, when you complete the certificate program? Again, if you complete a four month certificate, uh, you can go back home or you can carry these credits uh, forward into a master's or an MBA program. If you complete a two semester certificate, you can of course go back home after the two semesters. You can carry the 15 credits uh, into a master's or an MBA program, or you can apply for OPT and work in the United States for a period of 12 months. So uh, what is OPT? Uh, optional practical training is a work authorization that international students gain from uh, U.S. government to uh, after completing a, uh, an eligible program uh, that will allow them to stay and work in the U.S. for 12 months or more, depending on the program's designation. Uh, so you can, uh, while you're on OPT, you can look for a full-time paid work anywhere in the United States. You don't have to stay in Boston if you want to move to California because you find a job. 
you can definitely do that. Uh, Northeastern University has a uh, wonderful career center that works with our students. We also connect you with job placement agencies in Boston area that will help you with the job seeking. Um, and then uh, once you complete your certificate, uh, let's say you opt to do 12 months of OPT and then you come back and do a master's, you can then be eligible for another OPT. So let me tell you a little bit about Northeastern University's career services. Uh, for the past five years, our career center has been consistently ranked at number one and number two by the Princeton Review. Um, so uh, we have one of the best career centers in the country. The uh, Career Center staff prepares our students uh, with job search. They organize multiple career fairs for the university, um, so all of the Northeastern University students can attend them. And if you look at the sample events calendar that's on the right-hand side, some of the events are uh, specifically linked to international students uh, such as international student small group job search. Uh, they also do interviewing American style workshops. Uh, they invite you to different networking events. You can also attend our uh, employer in residence uh, lectures. And uh, since Northeastern is very famous for its co-op program uh, that allows our undergrad students and master's level students to gain some work experience while also studying, we have multiple corporate partners that work with us. So our networking is very large. Uh, just uh, some of our corporate mark partners are IBM, Deloitte, State Street, Raytheon, Hasbro. So that's just a, a, a couple of you for you to, um, to know. So here's the potential sequence of opportunities that students can um, uh, that students are offered to once they complete the certificate program. So you can complete a one semester certificate or two semester certificates and walk away with the 12 to 15 MBA level credits and return home. That's definitely an option to you. Most of our students uh, decide to pursue OPT after they complete two semester certificates. So they find work somewhere in the United States uh, after the certificate and they stay and work for uh, 12 months. We do have some students who were able to secure H-1B visas through their employers. Uh, so uh, that's also a great opportunity for you to market yourself. Um, another portion of our certificate students decide to um, automatically enroll into a master's program after they complete graduate certificate. So they uh, transfer the 15 credits, 12 or 15 credits that they complete in the certificate program into a master's program. You have students who decide to work after the certificate and come back to do a master's and then they, uh, they may want to go back home. You have students who uh, go into a master's program and then pursue OPT. So then they uh, decide to stay and work for 12 to 24 months depending on the master's program. Some of the programs that accept certificate credit are STEM designated, so your uh, OPT extends to 24 months now. Um, and then uh, some students uh, take advantage of OPT, so work for 12 months after, the com after they complete the certificate. Uh, when they're done with their OPT, they start their master's degree, and then they have an opportunity to do another OPT after their master's degree, so that uh, expands their work experience in the United States. Um, so here's a breakdown of uh, the cost of the certificate, the tuition cost of the certificate program right now. Um, so uh, the cost is uh, 15 13 per credit for a total of 15 credits if you're doing a two semester certificate um, or 12 credits if you're just doing the one semester certificate. Again, we do not require a GMAT or GRE for the certificate program. If you decide to pursue an MBA program, our MBA program is a 60 credit program. So walking away with a certificate, you're already going to have a 15 credits of MBA classes completed. Uh, and that then you will need to take 45 more credits to complete your MBA. Uh, you do need to take the GMAT or GRE for the MBA program. 
Uh, if you earn a 3.0 cumulative GPA in the graduate certificate program, you are guaranteed admission into one of our Masters of Science programs here at Northeastern University. Some of those programs are Masters of Science in Leadership, uh, Project Management. Uh, project Management is currently STEM designated, so you would gain 24 months of uh, OPT after the completion. Uh, corporate and organizational communication, uh, nonprofit management, and another program that's not on my slide is uh, global studies and international relations that's uh, that seems to be very popular with a lot of certificate students. Um, so as mentioned before, your credits from the certificate can move into our online MBA program as well. So uh, if you complete a certificate on campus and you decide that you may want to go back home and uh, complete your MBA online, you can transfer these certificate credits to our online MBA program. The best part about our online MBA program is that they do not require a GMAT. Uh, you can transfer these credits into our uh, evening professional MBA program that our uh, U.S. citizens, uh, working professionals, take after they work. So they, uh, they're working during the day, they come back in the evening and uh, are completing their MBA. Um, some of other MS degrees uh, that you can transfer the certificate credits in are digital media, uh, human services, uh, regulatory affairs for drugs, biologics, and medical devices. This seems to be very popular with individuals who have a uh, chemistry or pharmacy background. Um, technological entrepreneurship, as I mentioned, um, MPS in ge geographic information and, and technology, informatics, and uh, technical communications. And here's the further breakdown of the cost that includes uh, the cost of living, living such as uh, room and board, uh, that it includes books and supplies and health insurance, as well as budgeting for some of your miscellaneous personal expenses. Um, so in order, if you do gain acceptance into the certificate program, in order to secure that I-20 document that's needed for a student visa, you need to show that you can access at least $41,000 through your bank account. We do not offer any scholarships to our certificate program. However, we do allow students to sign up for a payment plan. This allows you to pay your tuition in monthly installments over the course of eight months. Uh, you're not going to get billed uh, for the entire cost of tuition right away. You're going to build. You're going. You're going to get billed per semester. So in your first semester, you'll be taking nine credits. Uh, so that's what you're going to get, get built for during your first semester and then in your second semester when you complete your certificate you're going to get built for the remaining six credits that will round off your certificate program with 15 credits. And then if you're doing a four-month certificate that's just for one semester uh, and that's only 12 credits then you're going to get built for the total for that one semester. So here are our application and admissions uh, instructions. Students must have a bachelor's degree, degree with at least a 3.0 out of 4 cumulative GPA or the equivalent. Uh, the Moore McKim School of Business does accept uh, three-year BCom degrees from India. If there are any questions uh, about your degree, we may ask you to do an evaluation. Uh, you must come from an accredited institution, so your institution must be accredited by an educational body in your home country in order for us to consider you for admission. If your institution is not accredited, then uh, you would not qualify. So here are some of our required application materials. You must submit an online application. I am including a fee waiver code. So this will waive your $50 application fee if you do decide to apply to one of our certificate programs. Uh, you must submit a current resume or a CV. We ask for one letter of recommendation, preferably professional. So if you have any type of work experience or any, if you've done any type of internships, we do ask that your letter of recommendation comes from a supervisor or a former uh, co-worker. If you work for yourself, if you own your own business, then uh, we would ask you to have a client write you a letter of recommendation. If you don't have any work experience, academic uh, letters of recommendation are accepted. 
we do ask you to submit a personal statement. This is uh, this is an essay where you address why you would like to uh, apply to graduate certificate program. We ask you to talk a little bit about your long-term goals and about your short-term goals. And we do ask uh, for copies of your official transcripts. So scanned copies are okay. You don't need to send me paper copies. If you have official transcripts that you can scan and upload, uh, you, you are welcome to do that. If you have never taken TOEFL or IELTS, uh, but your undergraduate degree was conducted in English, uh, as long as your transcript says that your degree was conducted in English, we will waive your TOEFL or IELTS score. We also interview every single candidate. As I mentioned, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, we do have three intakes a year. So we take students in January, in May, and September. Uh, so right now we're accepting apl applications for May with a deadline of March 1st. And then um, if you're thinking about joining us in the fall, the deadline is July 1st. I just want to mention that not all certificates are going to be available to international students uh, at every single entry term. Um, for example, our certificate in marketing is available to international students only in the spring. However, if you have a degree in business um, or have worked in a marketing field for one year, then uh, you might qualify for a waiver of the intro to marketing class that is required in the certificate program. So I still encourage you to apply. When we uh, receive your transcripts, we can review your qualifications and determine whether you, uh, you can qualify to start marketing certificate uh, in May or September. However, if you don't have any work experience and you don't have a business degree and you still wanna do marketing, then you can only apply for that graduate certificate in marketing in January. Uh, so right now this concludes my presentation. If you have uh, any questions uh, about application or um, how to get involved with us, I do encourage you to reach out to your agent. Uh, they have my contact information and uh, they'll be able to work with you to get that application submitted. Um, so uh, at this time, um, I'll stick around to see if you guys have any questions. I'll be happy to address them as well. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful information. Um, students, if you have any question or the counselors who are listening to us, if you have anything, please do write that so that we could talk. One of the question came just now is what is the requirement of IELTS and TOEFL for grad certificate program? Um, so as I mentioned, if your undergraduate degree was conducted in English, uh, we will waive your IELTS or TOEFL. Uh, we are looking, but if, you, uh, if your degree was not done in English and uh, you have to take IELTS or TOEFL, we would like to see at least six and a half on IELTS uh, or 90 on TOEFL. Okay. So no IELTS or TOEFL required if you have uh, uh, studied your bachelor's in English medium. If no English medium, then we need IELTS and TOEFL. Then only we need it. I have a question for you. Um, um, that So if, if we have a student with three years bachelor's, they mm -hmm. are also eligible for a grad certificate. Correct. Uh, as long as their bachelor's comes from an accredited institution. Okay. And when they go for a transfer of credits, do that 15 credits get transfer or they need to take entire MBA and pay for that? The credits, uh, so they, they are taking MBA classes. So students are still sitting in the same class with other MBA students. So these are MBA level classes that transfer into an MBA. They do not have to take them again. Okay. So all 15 credits can be transferred. Correct. Okay. Sounds good. And then when they go for uh, an MBA, after transferring this 15 credits, they don't even need to write the GRE or GMAT. 
for MBA program, they have to take the GRE or GMAT. However, if they want to transfer them into some of our approved Masters of Science programs, such as project management or uh, nonprofit management or others that I listed, they must have at least a 3.0 GPA at the end of their certificate program. If they met that GPA requirement, they gain automatic acceptances into those Masters programs and they do not have to take the GMAT or GRE. Okay. And uh, so if they do not need to take the GRE or the GMAT for the MS program, do they need mm -hmm. to take the prerequisite courses even before they start a grad certificate? Like grad no, certificate they don't. Has courses, but do they, as soon as they get there, do they write a set for a prereq course? No, they do not because certificate courses, they transfer in as their concentrations and then there, if they are going into a master's programs, all our master's programs are different. Uh, most don't have any pre-requirements. Okay. I've got another question from Mr. Zad, MD. Will the student get guaranteed admission in Northeastern University for master's if he has a GPA of 3.0 or the university will guide for other university? So for Northeastern, if your cumulative GPA is 3.0 and you successfully earn your certificate in, let's say, business administration, you will be automatically accepted into our Masters of Science programs that are pre-approved. And I believe I listed them in a couple of slides uh, prior to this one. If you would like me to back up to that slide, I definitely will. And I can point out to Masters programs. Okay. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, please, please do that. So that can be, um, if a student can only be guaranteed admit in the pre-decided course, but in order to get into an MBA, a full-time mm -hmm. MBA, they will still need to write the GMAT or GRE. Correct. And so MS degrees that are pre-approved uh, for students who successfully complete their graduate certificate with 3.0 GPA are project management, digital media, leadership, nonprofit management, human services, corporate and organizational communications, global studies, uh, technological entrepreneurship, regulatory affairs for drugs, biologics, and medical devices. Uh, MPS in informatics. This MPS in informatics uh, is approved for technological entrepreneurship certificate and innovation management certificate. So if you're looking for this particular program, you have to take the technological entrepreneurship or innovation management certificate. Same thing with technical communication. It's pre-approved for technological entrepreneurship certificate and innovation management certificate. So 3.0 in the certificate program uh, guarantees you entry entry into these MS degrees without GMAT or GRE. And if somebody wants to go for uh, an MBA, what would be the minimum requirement of GMAT or GRE? So if you're looking to transfer into um, our professional MBA program, um, I don't have the requirement for GRE. The average GMAT for... Um, for the professional MBA is 590. 590, okay. Yes. Okay, another question comes from Janani Umesh Babu. Um, what would be the salary paid after completing the graduate certificate course? Um, we don't really track salaries. Uh, we don't really track average salaries. Uh, the range is anywhere between forty-five thousand to seventy-five thousand dollars, depending on the type of job that you secure. Okay. So, Janani, just to elaborate the answer that um, you could get from forty-five to seventy, depending on the kind of job and the kind of employer who's going to hire you. But the good thing about this is, like, you could do the graduate certificate. As mentioned in a slide that you got six options so you could do the graduate certificate and take a year OPT and then go for a MS degree later on and then again take an OPT when you complete that so if you go for a direct MBA program you get one year OPT but if you go through graduate certificate you could uh, relish two year two two times OPT of one one year that's correct Okay, next question from Kulsum. If candidate completes grad certificate and MBA, will he be getting 24 month CPT? 
So CPT is different from OPT. Um, with, if you complete a graduate certificate program and you go on OPT, you get 12 months of OPT, then you complete an MBA and you get another 12 months of OPT. However, if you complete a graduate certificate program and go straight into an MBA program or a master's program, you're only guaranteed 12 months of OPT after you finish your master's degree or MBA. Okay. Next question um, from Nagasi Anam. Uh, if a student doesn't have fluency in English, will he get admission? Good question. Uh, we don't admit students who uh, don't have a, an English language proficiency. However, we would be happy to refer you to our ESL school partners in the Boston area. If you complete an advanced level of English uh, with our ESL school partner, uh, we will then accept you into our program when you receive that completion letter. So how do you check the fluency? Like, do you uh, interview them before uh, g giving them an admit? Yes, we interview all of our applicants. OK. Um, from Rajan Bista, the question comes like, are students allowed to work? So students are allowed to work on campus only for up to 20 hours while they are in school. Okay, so you could work for the part-time, but on campus, no off-campus job would be given. No off-campus jobs. Okay, I think that's it, but let me just wait for another minute or two to see if we are getting more questions. So I have a question meanwhile. So if a student mm -hmm. has completed a grad certificate of eight months, that means two semester, and then mm -hmm. if that student do not want to complete their MBA or MS from Northeastern, but go to some other mm -hmm. school in Boston mm -hmm. or any other school in California, let's say. Mm -hmm. Somebody got an OPT after grad certificate. Now somebody is in California and now he looks mm -hmm. or she looks for an MBA there. Do you think mm -hmm. those 15 credits could be transferred in some other school? Absolutely. We have students who uh, moved on from Northeastern and are doing their MBAs at Bentley, Boston University, UMass, uh, UCLA, um, just uh, many other schools in the United States, and they were able to transfer credits into the oh, programs. Complete. All, all 15 credits get transferred. Uh, I would say contact the school. I can only guarantee that fi all 15 credits will transfer to Northeastern's uh, MBA programs. Yeah. If you're looking to continue your education in other schools, I would say to contact them to find out what their transfer policy is. Sure. Um, for example, Northeastern's transfer policy with students who are coming from other schools is that we can only accept up to nine credits from other schools. So not all 15 credits may, tr may transfer. So I would contact the school cool and find out what the transfer policy is okay sounds good uh, the next question comes will the university assist for accommodation so we have a uh, we have a uh, student housing office and uh, they run multiple webinars uh, throughout the year to help students who are coming into various programs at Northeastern University secure housing so yes we do help students with housing okay so I think that's it for today. Um, I'm not seeing any many more questions. So I, I have a question for you, the last question, mm -hmm. that how do you uh, suggest students, especially Indian students, when you know that they have three years of bachelors, sometimes they even have four years, but why somebody should not go for a direct MBA and go for a grad certificate? Um, if uh, so, if you have a you know if you have a bachelor's degree and have spent um, some time working, for example, you worked for at least three years in the industry. If you have taken the GMAT, then by all means, go ahead and apply to our directly apply to our full time MBA program. However, if you are unsure of whether you want to pursue that MBA degree, you haven't really taken the GMAT, but you do want to take some MBA level courses, then graduate certificate program is perfect for you okay 
so i've got another question if a student has any gap between plus 2 and indian degree graduation will he get opportunity to get admission without any work experience means there is a gap of 2 years and no work experience can that student be admitted in grad certificate so we we evaluate applications holistically um so what does that mean we take into consideration every single piece of application so we'll review your uh, We'll review your transcripts. We'll review your resumes, your letters of recommendation. Um, if you have um, anything else that you want to add to the application that you think will strengthen it, we'll definitely look at that, um, and uh, we'll determine the ad admission based on the review of application. I cannot say uh, whether someone will gain an acceptance just based off of that. We really do look at applications as a whole. So I would encourage you to apply, anyways. Okay. How much total initial cost it comes to get admitted? Um, just for the admission, uh, there is a fifty dollar application fee to uh, to complete an online application and submit your documents. However, I did include an application fee waiver code in my presentation. Uh, you can see it here. A uh, fee waiver is cert dash cred dash nine eight two eight. So that'll save you fifty dollars of the uh, on the application fee. So it costs nothing to apply. Okay, so it just that the fee is what you would be paying right now. If you're planning mm -hmm. to apply for a main take, you could, you know, contact us and you can see on screen that this is what you could apply using the fee waiver code. the next question comes from deep patra stating that i am interested in mba in accounting so um our mba uh, our dual mba in accounting program is handled by a different office um i'll be happy to share their contact information with uh with Abib here and Abhishek and they, they can put you in touch with them. I do not have a lot of information on our dual MBA accounting program right now. Okay, sounds good. Last question of tonight is what is the requirement of GPA for direct MBA application? So I know this is a different office which takes care of the direct MBA application but any idea on the GPA? Yes, that I can comment on because I did work for that office in the past. Um, they don't have a minimum requirement for GPA with the direct full-time MBA program. Uh, again, they do look at applications as a whole. So if your GPA is below 3.0 equivalent of a U.S. Uh, on a 4.0 scale, but uh, you know you have a good GMAT score, you spent at least three years working, I would highly, uh, I would strongly encourage you to apply. Okay. Uh, so I've got last question again, um, but I'm, I think this is this is going to be the last one. If a student has done grad certificate and do the OPT and then go for a STEM program, will he get twelve plus twenty four months OPT or only twenty four? So the question is that after grad, if someone avail one year of OPT. and if they do a stem degree do they still get another 3 years or just 24 months so they're going to get 12 months after the certificate after finishing their stem masters program they'll get another 24 months okay but technically they should get 36 months well total is going to be 36 months okay. but uh stem program is 24 months as far as i know right now okay and then deep patra last question i have scored 60% marks in masters in uk what will be my gpa here as my undergrad is not good so he's saying i have got scored 60% marks in masters in uk so mm -hmm. so first thing is can that student apply who is already holding masters from uk and if yes then his his score was 60% so what would be the gpa Um I don't uh, I don't have the conversion for GPA but if you you know if you did your undergrad degree in uh India and then went to do a masters in UK then definitely apply for our certificate program we do like to see masters level students in there as well Okay so Deep Patra you can apply you could uh, send the documents to our admission team and then we can take it ahead apply for you 
So 60% marks looks okay, but the committee there would review your documents and they can decide. But because we have a fee waiver code, you do not need to pay any, any fee right now to Northeastern. Okay, thank you so much. I have a last question that how do you spell your name? It's uh, spelled J as in John, E L E N as in Nancy, A. So you That's my J first name. Jelena? Yes. Oh, okay. And then last name is Page, right? You said Page. Page. It's P as in Peter, E J I C. Okay, because I, I thought you said Helena, so I was just confused that am I pronouncing your name correct? Uh, it's actually Yelena, so J is pronounced like a Y. Okay, Yelena. So thank you so yes. much, Yelena, for today's session. We hope that students like this webinar and anything which you have, talk to our admission team and they'll be ha more than happy to help you with your grad certificate at Northeastern. Anything, Yelena, you have to say to the students? No, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come and uh, learn about our grad certificate programs, and I hope to see your application soon. Okay. Thank you so much, all. Have a great evening ahead, and have a good day, Yelena, for you. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.